In this first sample, you'll be introduced to the principal functions of the knitting machine, uh, specifically plain knitting in jersey and the tension dial settings. In the center of the carriage is the tension dial. This is a direct system. The smaller the number, the smaller the stitch, etc. So here you can see in this sample, you can achieve quite a variety of stitch sizes just by adjusting the tension dial here in the center. To get started, we're gonna use the cast on comb to quickly get work onto the machine. I'm gonna begin with the carriage on the right hand side, and I'm gonna to need to make a selection of needles on the needle bed. So I wanna cast on across 30 needles. And to do this, I'm gonna select every alternate needle within that grouping of 30. Because this is an even number, I'm gonna end up working needle 15 left to 14 right. I'll bring 15 right into work after this first row. But I've loaded the carriage with the yarn. I'm gonna knit one row across, and this is gonna put floats in between all of those needles that I had out in hold or in working position. Next, hang the comb so that it's balanced evenly and take the working yarn and thread it through the tines of the comb. We don't wanna trap that underneath it before you hang it. Make sure that the comb has grabbed all floats that have been picked up. Next, I can pull forward all of those alternate needles, including 15 right, and knit one more row. So here you can see that the initial pass put floats in the yarn, the second pass put floats in the new needles that were brought forward and formed stitches on the needles that had been previously uh, put into work in that first row. I've hung a bit of weight and still while keeping a, a bit of manual tension on that yarn tail, I'm gonna knit just a couple rows. So here you can see the few rows that I've knit. Um, and the, the openness that the combination of this yarn and tension dial setting five will achieve. To make the stitch size larger, I'm gonna turn the dial to 10. Uh, I'm not gonna do this in the middle of my work, so I'm gonna finish the row, then turn the dial to 10, and then continue knitting. Uh, only change the tension dial settings uh, when you're not actively knitting in the center of a row. So you can see here a little bit that the stitch size has gotten a bit larger. And if I knit a couple more rows at this tension dial setting, uh, you should be able to see a, a pretty visible difference. Uh, the yarn that's laid into each needle is a much longer length and that's what gives these stitches uh, their size. I've turned the stitch dial back down to five and knit a few rows. Uh, and now I want to experiment to see how tightly I'll be able to comfortably knit uh, this particular yarn on this bulky machine. I'm not gonna jump right in and go all the way to one or zero. I'm gonna gradually work down from five. Uh, I'm not gonna pay much attention to the dots or the half clicks between the whole numbers. Um, not always worth it per se, but uh, I'm gonna slowly work my way down to one. So while you can knit as large and as open as the machine will permit you, you can't knit with all yarns at very tight tensions. If the carriage struggles to pass across the machine at a tight tension, ease up on it. Ultimately, as the designer, you're in control here and you can determine uh, what size you want to knit at. But if it strains the machine or if it's challenging for you to move the carriage, chances are you're knitting at too tight of a tension. So when you're exploring and experimenting with tension, it's good practice to work slowly down towards the tighter numbers. You'll eventually with time get a feel for how the machine should operate, how the carriage should feel, and you'll know when something is too tight. So at this point in the sample, I'm just gonna experiment with uh, combinations of large rows at high tension numbers, uh, tight rows at lower tension numbers, and uh, any kind of combination of those things in between. So uh, one loose row followed by two or three tight rows followed by another loose row. Uh, you can get some kind of interesting textural effects that can become, depending on the, the two extremes, loose versus tight, uh, 3D kind of ripply effects in the work.
in class, I've talked and hopefully said a lot of these same things. Um, but the rest of the sample for you to knit up to row 100 is really up to you. Uh, you can play with any combination of the tension dial settings that you wish. Uh, the goal here is to understand how this works and the application of, of tension uh, and how it impacts the density of the knit structure that you're creating. Mechanically, the stitch dial is basically telling the machine how far to draw back the needle every time it forms a new stitch. The further back the needle is drawn, the larger the stitch. So therefore, if it's at 10, it's pulling the needle back further than it would be at 8. Uh, and then even further than it would be at 3, for example. So there, there's limits here, of course, and I've spoken a little bit about you can't go too tight with all yarns. Uh, there's also a top end limit. It can only make a stitch that's so large. And again, this is going to vary depending greatly on the yarn, the knit structure that you're knitting. And later in the semester, we'll get into some of those other more complex structures. But uh, for now, uh, hopefully this is a sufficient enough kind of introduction to how this is working. I'm going to pull this to the front. In class, we're working on single bed. I have my ribber set up here, and it's kind of a pain in the way, but I'll pull this up to the front in a second, and we can take a look to see uh, that you can get some really interesting uh, fabrics knit just by adjusting the tension. So the, the last thing that we'll do for this particular sample is uh, break the yarn and remove it from the carriage. So if we knit with no yarn in the yarn feeder, the work is going to fall off the machine. This is useful in some applications, but obviously if we were knitting a finished panel or a piece of a garment, we would want to bind off. All this will come later. Uh, but in this sample, we're just going to strip off. Because we didn't bind off, if you pull that working end or what was the working end of the yarn, uh, the knitting just unravels. So if we take a look at what I've just pulled off the machine, uh, you can see from the knit side here pretty clearly those areas of stitches that are larger and smaller. Uh, from the knit side, sometimes they're a bit more noticeable, but something fun to play with. Uh, and hopefully you've kind of arrived at some interesting textures in working this sample.